Hello, second graders. We are back for chapter nine of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory by Roald Dahl. And I'm here in my kitchen with um, Buddy today. He decided he was going to be my lap dog, so he's going to help me read, I guess. We'll see how it goes. All right, chapter nine. Grandpa Joe takes a gamble. The next day, when Charlie came home from school and went in to see his grandparents, he found that only Grandpa Joe was awake. The other three were all snoring loudly. Shh, whispered Grandpa Joe, and he beckoned Charlie to come closer. Charlie tiptoed over and stood beside the bed. The old man gave Charlie a sly grin, and then he started rummaging around under his pillow with one hand. And when the hand came out again, there was an ancient leather purse clutched in the fingers. Under cover of the bedclothes, the old man opened the purse and tipped it upside down. Out fell a single silver 10 cent piece. It's my secret hoard, he whispered. The others don't know I've got it. And now, you and I are going to have one more fling at finding that last ticket. How about it, eh? But you will have to help me. Are you sure you want to spend your money on that, Grandpa? Charlie whispered. Of course I'm sure, sputtered the old man excitedly. Don't start on there arguing. I'm just as crazy as you are to find that ticket. Here. Take the money and run down the street to the nearest store and buy the first Wonka candy bar you see and bring it straight back to me and we'll open it together. Charlie took the little silver coin and slipped quickly from the room. In five minutes, he was back. Have you got it? whispered Grandpa Joe, his eyes shining with excitement. Charlie nodded and held out the bar of candy. Wonka's nutty crunch surprise, it said on the wrapper. Good, the old man whispered, sitting up in the bed and rubbing his hands. Now, come over here and sit close to me and we'll open it together. Are you ready? Yes, Charlie said, I'm ready. All right, you tear off the first bit. No, Charlie said, you paid for it. You do it all. The old man's fingers were trembling most terribly as they fumbled with the candy bar. We don't have a hope, really, he whispered, giggling a bit. You do know we don't have a hope, don't you? Yes, Charlie said, I know that. They looked at each other and they both started giggling nervously. Mind you, said Grandpa Joe, there is just that tiny chance there might be the one. Don't you agree? Yes, said Charlie. Of course. Why don't you open it, Grandpa? All in good time, my boy. All in good time. Which end do you think I ought to open first? That corner. The furthest from you. Just tear off a tiny bit but not quite enough for us to see anything. Like that, said the old man. Yes, now a little bit more. You finish it, said Grandpa Joe. I'm too nervous. No, Grandpa, you must do it yourself. Very well then, here goes. And he tore off the wrapper. They both stared at what lay underneath. There was a bar of candy and nothing more. All at once, they both saw the funny side of the whole thing and they burst into peals of laughter. What the heck's going on? cried Grandma Josephine, waking up suddenly. Nothing, said Grandpa Joe. You go back to sleep. Did you think they were going to find it that time? I did. I thought they were going to find it. What do you think is going to happen next? Is Charlie going to find the golden ticket? So we'll have to 
wait to find out.